Right yeah, now we're at the safety of outside. Now someone asked me how strong these welds were. Uh, last video I did. Right yeah, pause, quick video. It's not really a quick video. It's probably pretty boring to 99% of my subscribers. So just this is a heads up. We just do a whole heap of spot welding and muck around and seeing how stuff, strong stuff is. In the end, it can actually do the fuse wire, my fuse wire and the actual uh, glass fuses. So that was that's the conclusion of this video. If you want to wig out now, cheers. Thank you very much for tuning in. To everybody else, play. Was the community spot welder, and this is this side. And they are not crash hot, I promise you. They are okay. But. I wouldn't call them good. They are resisting coming off a little bit. Now this, the top ones are only done once, the bottom ones are done twice. That's 1.9 kilos. So it does all right. But they were no, by no means good, good spot welds. I was really just trying to get the video done quickly and in one take. So I decided I was gonna prove a point and go, well, look, you know, this can do good spot welds and stuff like that. And I am in my backyard, so I apologize about the road noise. So I did these two spot welds here as a little test. Um, I put it at 25, I think, on the actual dial. And then I just went to tear them off. And of course I come running outside. I did grab my phone first and then I thought the better of it. And then went running outside. And now I've pulled that one off. You can see that the, the, the spot welds have actually torn out holes in the top of the actual cell. Now there is a cell somewhere out here as well that did the same thing just see little holes there the fluids run out of it and of course that one got launched out in the backyard as quick as I possibly could to answer the question this thing does some solid welds but let's take it back inside and we'll actually solder up we're gonna to have to replace that cell I'll replace that one as well but we'll solder up this side properly and see how much better it looks There we go, good as new. Back in the workshop. So we have got the little spot welder and we're gonna run some tests after we saw those two cells that are still outside vented, or one vented and the other one didn't. Now this, this cell here was the other one that I had attached to, but I ended up cutting off the nickel rather than pulling it off, just so it didn't destroy another cell. But of course, then I'm gonna have trouble spot welding to it. And as you can see on the other side, I didn't really prep it very well. and. Pressing down nice and hard actually had to go around some of the other dags, but that doesn't matter. Now I've got some nickel strip that Keith sent us from 18650 shrink. Keith, and then I've also got this big roll I bought off AliExpress, link below. Uh, now this was sold to me as pure nickel, and it served me really, really well and seems to do the job. But why is that discolouring if it's pure nickel? That's a question we'll all ask later. Someone said, it's, is it magnetic? Um, and I don't know how true that test is. I don't even know if there's any. So that's magnetic. Keith's is magnetic. And that's magnetic. So I have no idea. Maybe I'll Google it. Maybe I'll just guess and let someone put it in the comments below. Right. Settings. We have got the spot welder set to manual or oh, manual. But I might change it over to automatic. Now, automatic, you can do with the menu. Uh, click, mode, mode, auto. So hopefully what that does is when I go to spot weld something, it automatically goes and I don't have to press the button. So that'll make it a little bit quicker. So I don't have to press the foot pedal, my apologies. Just for reference, this pack is 1,816 grams. So 1 1.8 kilos. I have no idea what that is in other units. 64 ounces and four pounds. So there we go. The system works. 
So I'll try and do a bunch of consistent tests where- Quick heads up, Pete's talking shit, they're not gonna be consistent. Where I just sort of hang it from each one. So we'll grab some of this. Now this is from the one I got from Banggood. Some nickel strip, go this side. And we'll do it all on the negative terminal, not the positive, because they're, they're both different, obviously. We'll grab some of mine. Oh right, yeah, that's mine. I'm gonna solder mine on first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to, it's 10.1, or 10.3 joules. So I'm gonna go and up in increments of five on that because it's never gonna work on the, it's never gonna work properly on the standard one. So this is my nickel, and I wasn't even ready for that, at 10.3 joules. So I'm gonna pick it up nice and slowly, hopefully get it on cam and that is already starting to break off. Now they are the settings that I use to do the other side. In fact, I'll put that down nice and neat. So that comes off. Tore the nickel a little bit, but not horrible. Right now, we'll go again, we'll just snip a little bit off. We'll go in 0.5 increments. Uh, so E, go up to say 15, no, we'll go up to Go up in increments of five joules. I don't even know what a joule is, but it's a knobby thing that increases it. Okay, this automatic function is very, very neat. Okay, so that one come off pretty easily. Nothing magical about that. It may be different if I do it manually because I can make sure that I've actually got the terminals spot on. Now I tried to press a little bit harder on that one and that was 15 again. That still broke straight off. There is no resistance there at all, the breaking off. Right here, we'll go to 20. Right here, we've got 20.01. Okay, I wasn't even ready for that. Uh, I think I'm gonna get back to manual. Okay, so 20.01. Now that's one and a half kilo, no, 1.8 kilos at 20, and that's doing all right. Obviously, this is not a normal situation where you move it around, because moving it around is going to break the world. But I am jiggling it a little bit. See if we can get a close-up of it. Come on, focus. Is a proper spot weld. I can't get that off with my hand. Not with not without. Ah, uh, there we go. So that. Where is it? Tore up the nickel. Didn't even come off properly. Okay, so that is at twenty joules. So that seems like the sweet spot. There isn't any heat in those cables. We will see if we can snip that off. We'll go to a different cell. Now this is a piece of nickel. That seems like the, th I don't have a set of calipers that work, but I have a set of calipers. But some idiot smashed the screen, so it doesn't work. If I had to, you know, guess it, it feels like it's the thickest material that I've got. Um, I have no way of knowing what size it is, unfortunately. But let's give this one a crack. Keith's is apparently the same, but it does feel weaker than mine. And the only thing I can think is is Keith does better quality control and actually has pure nickel strip, and I don't. Rightio, test with the China stuff. Rightio, and that just pops straight off. I'll try it again, just in case it was my welding technique. That one. That's not horrible. It actually lifted. It lifted a part of the the cell up. All right, let's try again. Okay, maybe we we'll go twenty five with this piece of nickel. We'll just call it material from now on. I think. Get that on camera.
Okay. And that still doesn't stick. Now that is indicative of that nickel that I got the entire time. Um, even with the first spot welder I got, it didn't spot weld very well. I do have some thinner stuff of it that I got with it. And it does a similar thing. So this is a thinner strip. Now this is at 25 joules and that doesn't stick at all. Okay, let's try a different cell just to make sure it's not the cell that I keep spot welding to. Comes straight off again. Right here, let's try a piece of Keith's at 25 joules. Right, I'll come off, but I get a clean, clean weld surface. That there is quite good. I'm going to go back to 20 again. These cables are dumping a little bit around about at 25 joules. A cleaner cell. Go this side. So that doesn't, that still doesn't stick as well. Let's go back to, we've got 20 joules. Go back to some of mine, which is slightly thicker. This is not a scientific test, by the way. The whole cell is turning, and that's not just me. So that's a nice spot weld. Right here, so in my expert opinion, um, the nickel strip I got off uh, Banggood for, what was that, that 787 spot welder originally? That just plain sucked, it didn't work at all. Um, yeah, the nickel sucks as well. Keith's is really good, Keith's is very malleable. I think I need a better surface for Keith's. Um, and it really does, it does feel thinner, even though I just checked on the old interwebs and it says it's 0.15 of a millimeter, which is the same as my stuff was sold. But it just doesn't feel the same weight. I just wish I had a pair of calipers that were accurate enough to measure it and stuff like that. Um, mine, absolutely brilliant. Sticks all day long, sticks so hard that it just you actually breaks cells as you saw in the beginning. I think now it's time to do something a little bit fun and grab some, look, this, this is never gonna work, but this is just shits and giggles. I got a lump of, a lump of copper from my old bus bars and some copper from, well, my old bus bars. So what we can do, now I know this is gonna wreck the, the spot welder if I crank it up too high, so I'm not gonna go out there and just try and prove a point and have some fun. I really wanna look after this unit and have it available to the community for as long as humanly possible. So let's just grab a few little bits of nickel. Something else somebody asked, can it do the, can it do the glass fuses? So let's do that as well. So I'm gonna try at 20 joules to spot weld this piece of nickel, no, this piece of copper to this piece of copper. It's never gonna work right, but let's try it anyway. Nutter. <laughs> okay, that was a failure. Right, let's try and spot weld. All right, I'll just set the mode to manual. That's at 20 joules. So it blew the end of it off and didn't really spot weld it. Now that's gonna destroy the tips on the spot welder. I'm gonna have to regrind them. It's definitely gonna destroy the tips on the spot welder. So we'll turn it down to 10, uh, to 15. I can assure you this is no fun to line up for my eyesight. Oh, there we go. All right, No, okay, so it's definitely not doing it to that. Let's have a look to this piece of copper strip. Now this is the stuff that I used when I first did my packs. There you go. More welded the tips than it did the thing. Right, so that's not working. Let's go over here. And we'll try it directly to a cell. Wow. Wow, I don't even know if I got that on camera. So, answers that question. Will it do the fuses? Absolutely will. Let's try to do the other end on the positive side. All 
I found the trick was putting one terminal down and then rocking it over onto your fuse. And I guess you still got to do that properly. <laughs> and that's actually turning the cell. So that's, well, we might have to tinker with the settings a little bit, but it certainly does do the fuses. One last test. I'll see if I can find some of my fuse wire. Yeah. There we go, that next to a glass fuse. So the glass fuse is much thicker. So I'll turn this down to maybe five joules. There we go, I got that to five joules for this one. Bearing in mind, I'm still soldering to a very rough surface and I'm in manual mode, not in automatic mode now. Radio. Contact. I think that's an average Joe thing. Oh wow. At five joules. When I don't have a really good contact, I think it sparks that bad. So I think that's all my fault. The really big sparks. wrap this around here and no I can't pick it up I'm still very confident that that is a solid connection certainly one to be proud of and that's just going to break again just by the movement of the backwards and forwards and not from the actual spot weld itself All right, tubers, I'm gonna call that one a day. That was community spot welder test number one. If you've got any other tests, hit me up, let me know, I'll make it real quick. I'll rip it out and get it out there to the community. Remember, if you want to use this spot welder, link below to the community forum, uh, secondlifestorage.com. If you need a t-shirt, don't buy these ones because they shrink. Um, they make you look like you have man boobs. And I shall see you on the next one.